Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a match for you today that goes absolutely crazy. I've got my interesting team full of weirdos, and my opponent has a pretty threatening team over there. So let's jump into it. Trust me, if you stay to the end of this one, you're going to be like, damn. So my opponent leads off with the Gyarados. I decided to toss out the Flamingo just because I wasn't really sure. I want to get a nice little U-turn pivot here. It turns out they can't intimidate me because I'm about scrappy as hell. And now I decide to just go for a U-turn. I don't really have much business staying in here. But my Amigo here is going to play a pretty big role later on in the match. So I decide to go for that U-turn, get the pivot. And it turns out, looking at my team, I don't have a whole lot for Gyarados. I decide to just go into the Walnut. He's a nut. He's a wall. He's ready to steal your bitch. And he's ready to get up some hazards. However, their Gyarados ends up going for the Thunder Wave. So it's not the worst case scenario with the Fortress being paralyzed. But now I'm thinking, yeah, I don't really have much for this Gyarados. Um, and it's probably a bulky variant if it's running something like Thunder Wave. So I decide to go for a Thunder Wave of my own. I figure if I can cripple this thing a little bit, it should be that much easier to take care of. However, he just decides to end up going for the Taunt. And that is kind of the worst case scenario. So this is definitely full utility Gyarados. And I really don't know the build at this point. Uh, but these things are bulky and a pain in the ass to take care of. Especially because I don't have an electric move on this team other than Volt Switch from <laughs> Fortress. Which he doesn't hit too hard. So... I'm pretty much just forced to go for that Volt Switch here, as they're actually going to end up switching into the Kilowattril, who ordinarily is going to be carrying something like the ability Competitive. However, this guy has different plans, and it's actually going to be Volt Absorb. Pairs really nicely, some good synergy with that Gyarados. Uh, and I'm kind of in a bad spot here. I would like to have got my Stealth Rock up. This thing's going to be switching in and out, plus the Gyarados, and there's stuff like the Low Kicks. So Stealth Rock would be ideal, uh, but of course, I, I'm going to end up having to switch here. I do want to save the Fortress for that red card later. Because you can actually get some pretty solid utility out of that thing. So I decide to switch into Tyranitar here. He ends up going for a Volt Switch of his own. And I am getting outplayed out here because now he gets a matchup against Tyranitar. And I actually don't take that super nicely. Trying to figure out what item that thing might be carrying. It's probably Heavy Duty Boots. But regardless, he gets the Tauros in for free. And this thing is my Arch Nemesis because I do not like fighting. And I decide I basically have to go for my Ghost Terra. Try to get a little bit of momentum here and then hit it with a Specs Earth Power after taking a fighting move. But he actually makes a prediction here, ends up going into the Noivern. Now my guess, he probably expected me to switch into the Fortress, so then he tried to get the matchup with the Noivern and then catch me with a Flamethrower. But I'm just staying in here, making the basic play, going for that Terra Ghost. Um, and it's not really going to provide me too much help here. I do get the cool Ghosty on my head, but other than that, uh, against Noivern it's not going to do much. Plus I just locked myself into Earth Power. And that's kind of worst case scenario. So I am out here playing from behind. My opponent is definitely trying to make some momentum plays. And I have to figure out a plan here. So I'm choice specs into Earth Power. And of course I don't have any business staying in here. Got to get Tyranitar out of there for later. And I decide to go into slacking. I go slacking just because I figure I could probably take two attacks from this thing. As it does go for that Draco Meteor. Does a dick load of damage. But I'm able to take it. Um, and now I can either pressure this thing with Sucker Punch. Or just go for the Giga Impact. And I decide... Fuck it, we ball. I'm going for that Giga Impact, trying to get as much damage as possible as they actually end up switching back into the Tauros, who unfortunately is going to run back that Intimidate. And even though I'm actually Choice Banded, it's not going to be a one-hit KO with that Intimidate. But I do get that Giga Impact off, and it does enough damage to the point where I've chipped this to where I'm not really afraid of the Tauros anymore. So I'm honestly fine with that damage. Slacking doesn't seem like it's going to play a huge role in this match anyway. Uh, the bad news is now I must recharge, so I actually have to stay in here, and that kind of sucks. But... He actually ends up going for the Trailblaze. Now, it's important that I'm actually able to live that, because now this allows me uh, the potential to pretty much just save the slacking for later, and I can go for a nice little Choice Banded Sucker Punch on pretty much whatever. And I do want to save that, because that's pretty valuable, especially because there's a couple uh, kind of weaker Pokemon that I would like to save that for, like the Kilowattril. So I decide to tuck that thing in the back pocket for later, even though he's massive as shit, and I decide to bring in the Salamence. I come in on this thing because I can get that Intimidate, Plus, it doesn't have much in terms of damage it can do against me. So, it does have that plus one speed with the tail Trailblaze. But after the Intimidate, uh, Tauros ain't going to be... He's going to be doing a whole lot of nothing with that damage. So, now's where I figure it's time to see if I can get all Tiny Wings going. He's flapping nice and slow, but he's feeling ready. I'm going to go for that Hyper Voice. That is going to activate my Throat Spray. And we're going to see if we can get Salamence going. So, he ends up switching into Gyarados. Quite the Intimidating team as it is going to drop my physical attack, but again, this thing is also special. Uh, so I go for that Hyper Voice, and it literally does... I damn near healed that Gyarados with that Hyper Voice. I'm looking at this damage thinking, literally, what the hell just happened? This turns out it has to be 
literally maxed out HP and maxed out special defense, Gyarados, which I've truly never seen before. But I've come this far, I've activated my Throat Spray, and if this thing's carrying Ice Fang, more power to him. I'm just gonna go for that Dragon Pulse, get a little bit of chip damage there as he ends up going for that Thunder Wave. So that tells me the thing probably does not have Ice Fang. If it's running both Taunt and Thunder Wave, it probably doesn't have the uh, Ice Fang as coverage, so I just figure, I mean, Salamence is kind of good on switching into things like Tauros with that Intimidate. It's good against the low kicks, but I'm just like, fuck, I'm gonna stay in here and whittle down this Gyarados. I'm determined at this point to kill it. So I go for that Dragon Pulse. Uh, I was actually faster, but it turned out he was just going for the Dragon Tail. So that's gonna get my ass out of here. And honestly, that's not the end of the world. It, I, I was able to chip this thing to range where I can definitely take care of it. Plus, now I've got the power to switch in and intimidate something later, which is some pretty good value. So, in comes Bread. And my dude's looking a little bit stale. However, I'm looking faster than a Gyarados who's like max HP and special defense. So, I can just go for any neutral hit here. And it should be able to take this thing out. Plus, if he decides to switch Tauros, I go for the play rough. And it's kind of a win-win situation. So... Uh, Gyarados does go down here, which is good. The Lake of Rage is now rageless, and I'm sitting in a position where I can actually still switch out the slacking. Uh, not going for Giga Impact, I can easily just get out of here. So, in comes Iron Thorns, and this is a fella I'm extremely afraid of, and I've kind of been saving the fortress for this thing. So, a lot of the time you see this Pokemon, it's going to be running Dragon Dance with a loaded dice item, and it's, it's very scary. So, it does go for that Dragon Dance, and... The main reason why I wanted to conserve Fortress after noticing that my red card stays intact is that as soon as this thing touches me, I activate that red card and he has to switch his ass out of there. So I decide to go for the Stealth Rock. I really, really need that Stealth Rock up. It's going to help me so damn much. I know I can take one hit from this thing and that is exactly what we do because I'm an absolute fucking wall. Balls of steel out here and I activate that red card. I was hoping it was actually going to work just after one hit, but after the many hits, it does have to switch out, loses that Dragon Dance, and in comes the Kilowatt Troll. And I'm thinking maybe I can get my Stealth Rock up, however, I just get fully paralyzed, because why wouldn't I? I'm a fucking nut. So, that kind of sucks, but at least I was able to stop the sweep from that Iron Thorns, but now I basically have to try to uh, figure out a plan for later, because that thing is going to come back and it's still equally as scary. So. They end up just knocking me out with a Volt Switch there, and the important news is that I did not get my Stealth Rock up, so Kilowattro comes in for free, and everything can just switch around all willy-nilly without any repercussions. So, they decide to bring in Noivern on the Empty Switch. That's the good part about them killing something with the Volt Switch, is now I can just choose a matchup, and I decide to go into Tyranitar. Main reason for this is because I, can, I know I can take an attack from this, and a Choice Specs Ice Beam would just be cool as hell to see that thing go down. So I do go for the Ice Beam here, but they do know that Noivern cannot uh, take me out here. So they end up actually switching, going back into the Tauros. And unfortunately for me, going for the Ice Beam, it, Tauros has eaten so many damn leftovers at this point that it is gonna be able to take an attack. Um, so that is unfortunate. I go for that Beam thinking maybe I grab the kill. No, Tauros is bulky as shit too. Not very effective and I'm looking like a goofball with the ghost on my head over here. But the good news is still, it actually cannot touch me pretty much with any super effective hit. So it's forced to go for that Raging Bull. I can take that with 69 HP left, nice, and then finish it off with another Ice Beam. So down goes that Tauros. That thing was an absolute menace, and I'm feeling pretty good. I kind of wasted Tyranitar to take care of it, but I'm honestly kind of fine with that. So here's where this thing comes in. It's my cyborg ass brother, and I am put in a position where I'm stuck into Ice Beam. I kind of am forced to make a play here, so here's the plan. So. I decided to switch into Salamence. Main reason for that is because I'm expecting this Iron Thorns to go for that Dragon Dance. If I can intimidate it, I can at least neutralize its attack a little bit. So I do get that Intimidate, and it is going to end up going for the Dragon Dance. So it's important to note, at plus one after a Dragon Dance, you got plus one speed. My Flamigo in the back pocket does have the Choice Scarf, and if this thing stays at just plus one speed, I can actually outspeed it with that Flamingo. So that's the plan. Does end up going for the Rock Blast there, which of course just kills my ass in one hit. But I got the Intimidate off, which may or may not help me for later. And now, I get the free switch into the dude who I've been needing, and now is where the craziest play has to happen for me to have a chance in this match. So, I go into Flamigo. Now, I mentioned earlier, this is a Iron Thorns who generally is going to be Dragon Dance with that loaded dice. Now, I know through experience of using this myself that they're actually most of the time going to be Terra Bug. And of course, Flamigo pressures this thing with the close combat to knock it out as a rock type. So I'm going to predict the Bug Terra, and instead of going for the super effective close combat on the Iron Thorns, I'm going to go for the Brave Bird instead. Luckily for me, it does actually Bug Terra. I go for that Brave Bird, 
and that knocks it out in one hit because I'm still barely faster with my Choice Scarf. So predicting a Terra has got to be one of the best feelings in competitive Pokemon at the moment. And uh, Flamingo just making shit happen out here. So that was a good play on their end. Had I close combated, it would have been, it definitely won the game. So it keeps me alive, but there's still a lot of work to do out here. And Flamingo is actually looking pretty important for my late game. So uh, they go back into the watch roll. This thing's been a real menace, of course, the entire match. He's flying high as shit. You can barely see him up there. And I've kind of got to start figuring out a plan on how I'm going to kill this asshole. So I decide to switch into Tyranitar. He's chilling at 69, and his time is kind of up. He doesn't have much value uh, left in the match. I just let him die to the Thunderbolt. Sometimes you got to sack off the homies. But knowing that their Terra is gone actually makes me feel a lot more comfortable about maybe pulling this one out. So I get the free switch into whatever I want. Does lose some HP. It's actually Life Orb. We saw that. I mentioned that I didn't know what item it was earlier, but it, it's Life Orb. So this allows me to go into Edgar, the absolute fucking legend. Everybody hates Crabominable because it sucks, and I'll tell you what, it does suck. But he's cool, and I'm determined to get it to work. Uh, so my plan is to just basically go for an Ice Hammer. I know that I can take an attack from this thing other than Air Slash, and it actually ends up going for the Volt Switch, which is actually going to get the critical hit right to my big-ass meaty claws, but we're able to take it at least. And now some poor soul has to take this Ice Hammer. It turns out it's going to be Noivern, which is amazing because... Now we get to see Crabominable absolutely Hulk smash some bitches, do go for that Ice Hammer, and absolutely flatten the Noivern into nothing. We're having Noivern pancakes for breakfast, and Crabominable is able to log a kill, which is awesome because, like I said, it's fun to try to get this thing to work. Uh, so now they get a switch into Low Kicks. Now they're down to two Pokemon. They have the Kilowattril, they have this Low Kicks, and Low Kicks as a late game mon is extremely scary. It is not probably not a scarier mod. So I end up going for the U-turn to knock out my crab, which is fine. Now it's going to bring back in the Kilowattril, and I have to figure out a plan for both the Low Kicks and the Kilowattril. The Kilowattril currently is kind of the main problem. Flamingo in the back pocket can actually take care of that Low Kicks if I can get there. So in comes the Wattril, and I decide I basically have to go into slacking here, and it's looking like this thing's put enough chip on itself to where a Choice Banded Sucker Punch actually should do the job here. So all I need to do is bait and attack, and go for that Sucker Punch to open up the game for the late game Flamingo. I do go for that Sucker Punch, it stays in, and that is going to knock out the fake-ass Zapdos. And Slacking shows that while he may be loafing around most of the time, he does come in pretty clutch there. And now it's down to one Pokemon. I've been saving the Choice Scarf Flamingo to specifically be able to outspeed things like this. And now, essentially, I just need the Low Kicks to just kind of do its thing, take care of the slacking here, and then I can go into Flamingo and hopefully make shit happen. So, Bread's going to be loafing around, as Bread generally does, and the Leech Life does take care of me. Now, I don't actually know if this thing is a Choice Band Low Kicks. A lot of the time, you will see that, but as a, a Scarf Flamingo, there's pretty much nothing that this thing can do uh, to take me out. And it's looking like a well-played Flamingo can truly change up the game for you. I, I am potentially worried about a Sucker Punch, uh, but I'm actually right in range to be able to live one. So all I have to do is let Flamigo be the Brave Bird that he is, and I should be able to win this match just barely. I do outspeed the Brave Bird, takes care of the low kicks, and that is going to be the end of the match. Now, sometimes all you need is a Flamigo to click Brave Bird twice, grab you two kills, and completely swing the match. So. I had a lot of fun with that one, and it turned out if that Iron Thorns did not tear it into Bug, I would have had a bad time. But Flamigo is out here on top, and thank you very much for watching. Peace out. If you made it this far into this long video, go ahead and comment Migo.